What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to IT Security Labs. And I'm very excited today to start with our Active Directory machine. This is going to be our very first machine. And it's good to see Rodnet, PT, and Matthew. Thank you very much for joining tonight. I have a very exciting machine. I've been working hard over the past week, creating a machine that we're going to be using throughout the next few weeks so that we can really get to know Active Directory. So BT, if you want to give me a thumbs up, if you can hear me, since last time it looks like we had an issue with the audio. So let me know, brother, how it's, how it's going. Otherwise, let me show you what the machine looks like before we get started with the attack, because this is a really, really great machine. I'm going to be sharing with everybody after this, this live stream is done, so you can download and attack it yourself. Otherwise, this is the machine. I've worked on a few platforms. I combined everything that I've seen on the internet to create a best Active Directory learning machine. So let me share with you what that looks like. And I would, once we know what the machine looks like, then we can do the attack today, which is going to be really fun. Give me one second. So what we have today is a Windows domain controller. If you have never attacked Active Directory before, and if this is your first time, this is just a Windows Active Directory machine. And a lot of companies use Active Directory for say managing their infrastructure. In this case, we'll be managing um, users and computers and some power shares. And the, the idea here is for people to be able to share things within a network, say file shares, email authentication, you need a, one machine called a domain controller. And that's the Windows machine in this case. And in this domain, domain controller, we, we have a lot of services that it runs, including uh, users and computers. So what you're looking at right now is a list of all the users that are on this system that I've created are using some automated scripts out there. And these users here will all sign in on a network trying to authenticate to resources like email access, uh, file share access. And our goal as an attacker is to break into this machine using misconfigurations within Active Directory. And this machine that I have here is intentionally vulnerable. It's a combination of the detection lab and also um, some automated scripts that are found online to create a vulnerable Active Directory. And in addition to that, I also put my own little spin there uh, to put some services to make it interesting. So let me show you what we'll be doing today. We're going to be doing what is called AS rep attacking, and I'll be explaining everything step by step here. So first, just like anything that we always do, we start with an nmap minus SV minus SC. 12168.38.134. That's my IP address. So you're going to notice that Active Directory does open a few ports, and I'll explain some of those ports once they come up here. And when you attack Active Directory, just like any other machine that we have attacked on this channel, it's just going to be slightly different in that um, it's just Active Directory Windows. So there isn't going to be a lot of like Go Buster and all those. Uh, Nikto tools that we use, even though sometimes, especially for the OSCP, I wouldn't be surprised if they give you a website running on the same uh, Active Directory environment. So always make sure that you use all this, the skills that we, we need. But for now, we'll start with our Nmap scan and let's see what happens with that. All right, the one thing that's downing the first time you see Active Directory is it's going to be the number of ports that are just going to be open. It's insane. Let's do a quick breakdown of the ports. We have our usual FTP, and I'll tell you why I did this. This is my little spin here. I needed a way to tell you the users on the system. When you're attacking Active Directory, the very first thing that you want to know is what valid users are on the system. And there are many ways you can find that. Uh, in this case, our FTP is exposing people's file shares. For whatever reason, in this company, people were sharing files using FTP. And they put their names in it. 
So if you are given Active Directory, start thinking, where can I find valid users? Even one. And I'll show you a few steps that you can follow. But for now, right away, you see that FTP is open, it's anonymous, and there's a list of folders for each user. We need to validate whether or not these are valid users on our Active Directory environment. And once we validate that they're active, valid users, we can see if we can steal their passwords from Active Directory. All right, another dead giveaway is DNS. DNS runs on, uh, <coughs> excuse me, uh, DNS runs on the Active Directory server because you, you need the domain name service to run there. And of course, for whatever reason, <laughs> this is just running a default IIS installation. You know, because this, this header here is for a default, default IIS uh, server, which is also another attack surface because when you see this, you always wonder, is this port 80 tied to anything in the FTP server? That's always a good relationship to look for. But then we see Kebros. Kebros is what Active Directory uses for authentication. There is a whole process of um, um, the Kebros process in which um, tickets are passed. And it's like a very fun, I'll probably make a video about uh, Kebros and how Kebros authentication works. It's a very, very interesting where um, a user gets a ticket from this Kebros server, and then they can use that ticket to go around accessing resources on the network. So if they have file shares, a user can get a ticket from this server and then go to a different file share and say, hey, I have a ticket and it's valid. As long as that ticket is valid, Kebros will be used for authentication. And this is what we'll be abusing today. And our, your goal, is we, especially if you are going for the OSCP, should be to list all possible ways you can exploit an Active Directory server. And today we're covering just one. Um, which is AS rep uh, attack. Then, of course, we have uh, NetBIOS and LDAP for, for Active Directory. This is actually what's running the real Active Directory. Then, of course, um, a lot of other things here, like MySQL, which might be meant to throw you off. Knowing what all these ports are for is going to really speed up you to narrow down uh, your attack to something else. You also want to look for SMB. In SMB, here we're looking for version one and if version one is there there's a few attacks that you can try but also look at the fully qualified domain name it's dc.windomain.local that's very important for us to know so after spending time understanding our results here let's do what we normally do first thing is you see ftp anonymous this time it even indexed the directories we go and sign in to ftp 192.168.38.134. Anonymous without a password. Then we say there. Sure enough, we see all those directories. So let's go to. There's nothing in there. Let's go to this person's directory. All right, so that's how you enumerate FTP right away because it's open. So far, I'll tell you, you have to go through every single directory and find out if there's anything interesting hidden there. In this case, there isn't anything. They're all blank directories, but as an attacker, what we just found here is a list of potential users. So what you do is you copy all these names here and you type them into a file called users.txt. Um, let's open a new tab. So I hope you have a, a working directory. So in this case, I have a working directory and I have a users.txt file. So we can create that. 
where did we find these users? We found these users from here in our FTP directory. And when you're attacking Active Directory, finding users is like the best way. Like if you ever, the, the hardest thing that's going to happen is you're going to see that it's an Active Directory environment and you have no valid user. So you will spend a lot of time trying to find users. So let's spend a moment talking about where can you find users? You can find users from the website. So if the victim is running a website, you go to the website and you find the contact us page. If there are people listed there, you can create a user list that you can try. And there are few ways you can do that, that you need to know. So say you went to a website and the website has a list of employees and they, they are named like, you know, like these, like just like use first name and last name. You need to understand that most companies or most employers create usernames in this way. First dot last, that's one way. Sometimes they would do uh, first initial. Last name, so it will be first last name. Like that, or sometimes they will just do Last, last name, then first initial. Okay, knowing this is going to help you. So if you went to a website and they have users like Dini Nikki and um, Alana Darcy, and you're like, oh, I don't know what their usernames are. You need to, as an attacker, at least these are the, th the three that I can think of right away. Create a word list of those users using this format here. Because usually they don't tell you. Another trick that you can find if you want to find the format that an employer has um, usernames as, look at the contact us and look at the email address. If anyone on the website has an email address, the email address format is usually the username format. So if they say, like say, this is our user, It so you go to the website and you see this as a username. It'll be at windomain.local. Right away, the very first part of an email is what a username might be. It's a big might, but it's worth you trying. These are the common things that people do. So when you go to a website, look for any users that you might find, create a username list. You can even um, write a simple Python script or bash script to create this for you. Come up with a valid username and pass um, username list. Without this, some of the Active Directory attacks will not work for you. And this is a fundamental uh, thing th that you can do. Yes, x8 x86 says if you are if you are working with a company, the easiest one is go to the employees' social media like LinkedIn. People would put their, their um, employer in their full names there. So you can actually find a bunch of people who work at a company. And if your goal is to break in and have more privileges, maybe target IT people, maybe target um, upper management people. So you can use social media or send, and also um, the company website. Or even who is records, sometimes they will have someone, their IT administrator's email address posted. So if you do a who is for the domain, uh, SSL certificate information will also give you domain information. These are very important things to do. I know attacking and jumping on the keyboard and running a bunch of commands is exciting. Without these fundamentals, you might struggle breaking in. So knowing that is very important. All right, so for our sake here, we just found a list of users listed in an FTP share. That's may maybe you might not see that for a company. You might see that for a company. Um, but let's move on to uh, a GNOME for Linux. So if you see 445 open and these NetBIOS servers, um, NetBIOS ports here, RPC, you need to run a GNOME for Linux against the system.
this is like a lazy lazy way of enumerating i used to not like this too because it makes enumerating mindless but at the same time it does catch um the obvious and what this tool is going to do for us is is going to enumerate the domain and in this case it comes back and tells us hey by the way the domain is called win domain so we now know that we we do have win domain if there were any shares on the system that are not ftp that are exposed that we can enumerate they will be listed here as well you also see um usernames if there are any that are exposed through rpc in this case it runs the a new domain user here and it, this time our system is actually uh very solid if it's misconfigured for this which in the future will actually uh misconfigured intentionally so that we can see information here with rpc client uh in this case we can't smb1 is disabled so there isn't shares that you are going to see here but you want to make sure you um check for shares if you can and we actually don't have a lot of things exposed in this case but a new for linux is a tool that you want to know for sure you, you want to make sure that you have a good understanding of the results that comes from a new for linux this time we didn't find anything if you wanted to do things by here by hand you can use smb client because i do have a few uh, really all right let, let's use smb client here let's go to my notes i know the syntax is very silly but smb All right, so you see, I, I do have in my notes here that if you want to enumerate SMB, this is what you do. In this case, we are saying like this. Actually, let's, let's look for anonymous. You might be thinking, uh, why would you just have silly things like this documented? It's because I don't have the mental capacity to memorize all this little um, commands and their syntax. And the last thing that I want to do is to have them throw me off my game because I missed one forward slash or I put it the wrong way. 134. All right, so SMB client uh, is minus L, I believe it has to be, because I want to list I don't have a share. All right, so anonymous is uh, anonymous login is there, but I don't have any shares. You need to make sure you check everything. And as part of your Active Directory, SMB ports are open. A new for Linux would have found this for you, but I'm just sh showing you that um, this is how you do it. So as you can see. We, d we have nothing as far as SMB is concerned. Don't move on until you are sure that SMB is accounted for. If there is an FTP port, you want to go and check it out. You want to be as thorough as possible in a methodical way. And what I'm showing you here are the steps that I would take if I were actually um, going to do this. Somebody says to use SMB map. I think I have SMB map somewhere. Um, if you also wanted, you can use uh, Nmap. Nmap does come with um, scripts that you can use for enumerating SMB. I will not run this because there isn't really anything. But use Nmap if you can. And you, you can also use this checklist here. I'm a big fan of this one. Really, really great checklist. If you are unsure, these, these notes here have saved me a lot. So I'll put a link to them. For your own benefit so if i'm ever unsure i just come here and say okay this is how i need to really enumerate uh, smb to make sure that i get there all right 
Yeah, and th- these notes will not help you. They don't make sense to a lot of people. I know what's in there, and I know how to search for it, but for the most part, I don't know if they will help anybody. All right, so SMB, we are moving on. And our methodology says, so far we looked at, we haven't done any DNS recon yet, which we should. We only did 21, and then we moved to... um. 445, so we moved to, to SMB and RPC. Now let's go to Kerberos here. Since we have users, it's just fitting that we go and try them. You can visit the website. There is nothing here. I'm not going to waste our time. This is just a blank website. I, I was actually trying to set up a website and put users there so we can generate a user list. I just didn't have enough time to get there. Next time, we actually have a functional uh, website with users so it looks like a real company this right here is just a hacky way of giving us a username somehow but let's go to Kebros because that's our um, for the most part you're going to interact with this in one sh- shape or form I'll be surprised even for in most cases if you're enumerating active directory if you uh, don't poke on Kebros at all so since we have some users Let's try a few things. So you see, I have this uh, get np users.py. Let me show you a configuration that we are exploiting today because it's very important that you know what it looks like on the victim when it's not set up correctly and how the attack could work. So let's go to our system here. Here is a system with a bunch of users. There's one box here that if it's misconfigured, for example, in this case, let's pick on this vagrant user. You see there's account options here. Depending on which options you check here, things can really go bad. The one that we're going to check is uh, this one. Do not require Kebros pre-authentication. If you do not require Kebros pre-authentication, what that means is people like myself can reach out to these systems and um, ask for, say, the keys, uh, instead of the keys, the password the hashes. So let's, let's show you what that looks like. This is the box that is going to allow us to dump this user's password hash. Without that box checked, for example, any normal user by default will not have that box checked because that's Windows way. For whatever reason, they do ask people to do uh, to, to check this. There is instances where you need to. So if you check this box in Windows, bad things are going to happen and I'm about to show you how that can happen. So there is an two code in packet that comes, I think it comes by default with your Kali. Let me verify that. We're going to be using this a lot. I think I downloaded my own, but as you can see, I have multiple ways here. If you do not have the in packet, there is a GitHub. If someone can, can someone please post the uh, GitHub for in packet tools? You are going to need these for Active Directory they will become your best friend because they work really well. And one of them is get NPU, NP users script and the syntax to run this script here so that we can check if we can get th- that users uh, hash is this one. I was actually working on this earlier. You know what? Let me start with with another one, another two first before I go go to that. Uh, get PN users. As soon as this thing comes back, oh, I think my system is just spinning. Let's give it a minute here. I'll answer some questions here. Uh, someone says, "Can you share your notes?" Yeah, the notes the notes are not going to help you much. And th- thanks. Thanks, Matthew, for sharing Impacket. How can we download the vulnerable Windows VM? I'll be uploading this VM in the comments as soon as uh, this this is done. 
so that you can you can practice all right so let's run this tool called kbrut and let me show you what it does give me one second All right, there is a win, uh, Windows Active Directory enumeration tool called kbrute, and this is you can use this to quickly uh, brute force and enumerate valid Active Directory uh, accounts through kbrute. Remember, we said you go to your website, you create a user wait list, but you're still not sure what the whether the users are even valid or not. Before you even go and try to dump their hashes, verify that the users are valid, and this is the tool that you use for that. And by using this, it will go through the system and um, validate using Kbros pre-authentication and see if the users are valid or not. We found a list of users. To validate that they are valid, we're going to use this Kbrut tool. And here's its help, where you can um, specify the DC, which is the domain controller. You can specify the domain, and you can use it for even a lot of things like, you know, uh, password hashes. So I'll show you both uh, the user enumeration using Kbrut. Then we'll also use the impact uh, tool to dump uh, one of the user's hashes. But we can also use it uh, from here. Another tool that you can try is called password spraying. I'm not doing it for this lab because uh, I don't think it's as fun. But you need to try common password, like uh, password one, two, three, uh, change me. You know, the common passwords, and you can even use the wait list from, um, from the internet for the common passwords that you can try. But this is more like brute forcing. I don't think, for the most part, brute forcing is going to be something that you do for the OSCP. But in the real world, I've seen people use simple password like summer 2022. So, Kbrut here, we're going to say, hey, go to this domain, windomain.local. How do we know that this is the domain? According to our results from Nmap, it told us. According to our results from Enum for Linux, it told us it's windomain.local. We want to give it a list of users, which is the users that we put in the users.txt and the domain. We want to find out are those users val valid or not? And we'll find, we'll find, we'll find out here. If we do that, let's see if those users are valid or not. And as soon as the results come back here, we check it out. Shouldn't take this long, but looks like my car is freezing, doing too much at the same time. So if we wanted to if you wanted to use this Kbrut tool, it actually shows you how to install it. I'm not sure, I don't remember when I installed it. I, my, I've had my Kali Linux for a long time. It might come default within your Kali, but also, yeah, it looks like this tool might come by default in your Kali Linux. But if you need to install it, here is how you can install it uh, within your Kali Linux system, which is very easy. All right, so once it runs, it will tell you, hey, by the way, we found these users. These are all valid. You know, for fun, in hindsight, I should have put invalid users here so you see um, what, what it looks like. But kbrut is what you do. First step, find users, create username, possible usernames using the scheme that we spoke about. Then use kbrut, point it to the user list and then see which ones are valid and which ones are not. Not everyone we, we are going to find on the website is going to be a valid user. But another interesting thing is, look at this. It says for the Vagrant user, not pre-auth. What this means is this button is checked for this user, like we said earlier, all the way at the bottom here. Do not require Kbros pre-authentication. 
So if you're asked, how do you fix this? Uncheck this box. Do not have this enabled. All right. So now that we know Vagrant does not have pre-auth, that's the one that we're going to target using uh, the impacket tool to make sure that we actually can see if we can dump that user's password hash. Then once we dump the password uh, hash, we're going to try to see if we can crack it using John. And once we crack it, we're going to try to see if we can get into the system. So that's what we'll be doing here. All right. So to, to do that, to use the, let's, let's find the proper usage for the, the, the get you, PN user. My system is spinning. I don't know why this Kali Linux is spinning right now. I think it's taking a snapshot right as I'm working on it. I have a daily snapshot that this thing takes. So let's give it a, a second here. Yeah, thanks BT and Matthew for keeping this. I appreciate your help. All right, so next we need to run this you can run it from the uh, impacket to, I mean, impacket directory. Does it does it provide us a help menu? Let's see. If you run it without, yeah, it will actually tell us. So we can get a ticket granting ticket for a user, and this is how you use it. It actually shows you, hey, if you want someone to get the, the ticket, this is how you use it. Get a list of users with require pre-auths, do, don't require pre-auth set. We just use the Kbrut tool to do the same exact thing here to check. So let's keep looking. Or we can use it this way. Request a ticket, grant, granting ticket for users in a file. And we can just use it like that. You know what, let's, let, let's, let's try to request a ticket. We only know that we actually have just one user that's valid anyway. So we can either use a file or we can go for a user directly. Um, let's go for a user directly first. Because we know there's one user called Vagrant. So to make sure that I don't miss the syntax, I think it's this DCIP of 192.168.38.134. Okay, the help menu is assuming we're going to be running this locally on the system or on a system that's joined to the domain. We are not, so we need to give it the DCIP. Uh, without a password, but we don't want John Doe because we have a user called Vagrant. And our domain is not Contoso, it's windomain.local actually. So let's do that. All right, so what are we doing here? We're going to see if we can get the ticket and the ticket that a person gets from Kebros contains their password hash as part of their ticket. Remember I said earlier that Kebros likes to give users tickets so that they can go around passing tickets and saying, hey, I'm authorized. It's almost like going to a zoo where you buy a bunch of tickets, or in this case, you just get one ticket and you present a ticket and you have access. So if a user gets a ticket from Kebros, that ticket has their password hash is part of that ticket. And <clears throat> when they go out around the network, they can be authenticated to file shares, to email addresses, to websites, anything that authenticates using uh, Kebros in this case. So we specified our domain, our user, and our domain controller. So let's see. I might have the syntax off here, but I just used what they gave us. 
All right. So we got a ticket granting ticket. <laughs> That's what TGT means here. This is a ticket for the user vagrant. It's a it's a ticket because it's this this whole thing here. However, it actually co contains the user's password hash as well, and we can crack this in a way if if you wanted to and get a password. In fact, we are going to crack it to right now using John. But <clears throat> excuse me. This is the most important thing that I wanted to share with you today is find users, use impacket tools to get their ticket if that misconfiguration is there. This is one of many Active Directory attacks that you should be checking for. So we have this hash here. How do we actually deal with this thing? Let me uh, add a few things for you for your notes that you can use that I've actually found that will make your life 10 times easier. This is just a little, I, I saw this from someone's write-up when I was doing Try Hack Me a while ago. So if you have a list of users, so you say you can do a for loop that you can create. You can cat your users to a text file and then run Python 3 on Win Domain. Remember we had put Vagrant here. We can just replace our user following this for loop. And of course, no pass. Then we can output to a file, hash user, in format of John, and DCIP. All this is just doing is it's going, it's going to give us a file, and also it will format it for John. So I would add this to your notes, just in case you end up with uh, users. Let me see if actually this is going to run. No, I, I, didn't, I didn't complete my for loop. I need, I need to make sure that is complete. In one second. Uh, it's broken somewhere. For each user in this, do Python no pass out file format John. Okay, let me remove this dev now. Anyway, I, I need to fix this for for for. Did I put two? Why is my for loop not working? For user in this, do Python three. All right, let me find. Let me find the, the complete one so I don't spend too much time trying to fix this. I found it on someone's. Oh, there we go. I need to specify done. Anyway, that was my attempt at showing you how we can automate this. We can also just run the, the whole file like we saw from Impacket. It's probably, it's probably easier that way. We can just specify a file like we saw here. which is probably a, a, a better thing to do anyway. Forget that I tried to do this fancy stuff. Let's use Python 3 and use the, exactly what they have here. We have users.txt, no pass. Our domain is windomain.local. And then we need to dash DSC dash IP of 192.168.38.134. What I'm showing you here is how to fish, right? <laughs> I'm, I'm using the tools right in front of you, showing you how I use them. Like I'm just running this so it gives me the help. Then I from the help, I'm just making up the commands as I need. And as you can see, if you run it after a list, which is actually cleaner than that for loop, uh, it will actually just give us uh, everything that we need here. It, telling us, hey, by the way, these users, they don't have that set. And if you go and check these users, you will notice that they actually don't. So let's actually find one of them.
Let's go to D. We can't just be saying we need to verify these things, right? And sure enough, we do not have this box checked. If I check this box for this user right now and apply, watch what happens. Right now, this user was not there. Let's do it again. We should now have two password hashes. And sure enough, we just turned the switch. Within a few seconds, we're able to uh, get that users. Um, ticket granting ticket. All right, so we get a ticket granting ticket. What do we do with this ticket? Well, we need to crack it. We, we need to crack, we need, we need to, to get it such that, um, actually, I want this section here. Let's just get Vagrant's um, ticket. Then we can hopefully use John and John should be able to. To get, to get our stuff. So I need to output to file. Format John, I believe this should work. Let me see. If it's just a syntax, we'll, 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 we'll all fight to this together. So I, I want this to be the Vagrant ticket to be put to a file called hash. And I want that in a format that John can understand. So let's hope my syntax is right. If it's not, we'll go back to the help. Okay. Uh, let's see. You know, it, now I can tell if this is the format that I want, or if, it, if my um, format is not even taken. All right. My out file didn't work, off, obviously, because I don't have a file here. So this thing is, needs to tell me what its options are. Let's see. Output file, so that is a, that, that's correct. Format, that's correct. So where did we go wrong? We can output a file and we can format. Is it because of where I, I put my commands? Let's go find out. Oh yeah, the format will work for hashcat. In fact, you know what? I might go for hashcat now that it's not it's not it's not going for for John. I want to find out the output file and also the format. So far, it's not running. Is it because of where I placed this? You know what? Let's crack it first with Hashcat, then we can spend the, la the, the last time uh, trying to figure out why. Us usually, we should be able to ac access it using the out file. Uh... All right, I'm going to use Hashcat. Let's see if it works. Thanks, C Winsek. Winsek. C Win for sake. That's awesome, bro. All right. We have our hash here. This one for sure works. Oh. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. We only want this. We don't want the other noise. All right. See why I always verify? All right, 
let's let's fry up a uh, hash cat here. Let me see my syntax for hash cat. Give me one second. All right. So for this one, I have my file code hash. Here's the syntax. I'm just using my notes from a while ago. I might butcher this, but hashcat is a tool that we're using. We wanted to force minus M, then 18200 is the format here. If you are not sure which uh, value to put here, I believe you can copy. I think I think if you copy this here, there is an online tool where if you copy this, let me see. There's a hashcat hash identifier. I've used this before. If you probably have a tool in Kali. But uh, this works for me. Is is the hash.net wiki. Wait, is, is, is my audio not working? I'm trying to load the hash examples here so you can see what I'm talking about. Hey, BT, can you let me know how the audio is doing just in case it broke? I think this is the website. Okay. You can go and identify the hashes uh, using the hash identifier options out there. But what you do is you use hashcat, specify the hash here, minus A, M, then, uh, where was I? Then we have our hash file. Then we need to specify a word list here. Let's let's use the, the obvious, user share word list. Roku.txt, you probably want a better wait list than Roku.txt, but for this case, uh, let's use Hashcat and see what it say it, it does. And it's running. I don't want to move on though without trying the John format. It's now bothering me that <laughs> it, didn't, it, it, it didn't save um, the way it did. So we're running a Hashcat here. Uh, in a virtual machine, I have a dedicated Windows machine for cracking hashes. I encourage you to have the same. But for now, since I'm just sharing this screen, um, do that. It's an old gaming PC with 24 gigs of RAM and a really solid CPU. And things don't take too long when I do that. So depending on, on the password hash that you have and how things are doing, this might take a while. So... I need to be patient here. And also, since I'm using Roku.txt, that's not the, the best, really. L let's see if we are able to just uh, create that password hash using Hashcat. I see progress. Okay. So it says it was cracked. Now I need to remember, where do I find the password? Right here, all the way at the end. So thanks Cwin for, sec for suggesting Hashcat right away. I guess you don't need to worry about the formatting for John, but because I started it, now it's really bothering me. I need to make sure that it works. So we just cracked a user's um, password and the password is Vagrant. What do we do now that we have a user's password? I mean, let's go. Did I keep my results here? You have a user's password. There's a few things that you should be able to do. Right away, I, I don't know if you have RDP open for things like um, the OSCP. Windows administrators usually like their RDP. I used to be a Windows administrator. So you always want to come here and check, do they have a remote desktop open? And if they do, that's port 3389. You go and you sign into this system using remote desktop. So in this case, 
Um, I think I have a tool called Remina. So since port 3389 is open, I will try to sign into the system using Remina. I will show you another tool that you can sign in called Evil WinRM. But this is a quick connect and the server is 192.168.38.134. Username. Password. You could have guessed this one. All right. I guess this works. Let's just save and connect. And sure enough, we can. And as you can see, this is this is where we were earlier. But once you get into a system, oh, this is not ideal. There we go. All right. So now that we are in, thanks Linux Racer for the super chat, appreciate it. So now that we're in, I'll, I prefer PowerShell. I know some people prefer um, the command line. I like PowerShell because I, I've done some PowerShell, they call it programming. I don't know if it's programming, but scripting. Let me quit that. So let's see, this PowerShell terminal didn't want to work. Let me open the one that I like. If you're not comfortable with Windows, PowerShell ISE is going to be a good friend. I can't run it as administrator because just in case I'm not. There's a reason why I like ISE is because it gives you this scripting engine pretty much. That's what uh, ISE stands for. So, where am I slash all? I think that's what Windows says you can do. Who are we on this system? Ah, it looks like we hit a jackpot here. This is not ideal. This will be a 10 point machine for the OSCP if you broke in this way. You are in the NT authority uh, group here. Uh, you're in the built in administrators. This means that you have the keys to the kingdom. You, you might as well have, that's the same as having pseudo privileges or root privileges in Linux. So at this point, as this user, I can do anything that I want. I can bring in Mimikets here and dump even the administrator's password if I wanted to. Um, I can do all kinds of things. In fact, since I'm already an administrator, this is as high as I can be anyway. So we might as well uh, do that. Yeah, PowerShell IC is, is good. So I wanted to show you this way here. If you did not have remote desktop, because someone is going to say, well, what if I don't have that remote desktop too? Uh, let's exit out of here. If I can figure out how to exit. All right, there we go. If you do not have this port, because it's not always open, if you do not have this 3389 or it doesn't let you, how else can you try to get into Windows systems? There is a tool called Evil WinRM. If I were you and if this is your first time, I would, I would take some notes. Was Like I always say, you need multiple ways, because the thing is, when you show up and your one way that you know doesn't work, you need other ways. Remote desktop is one. Here's our good friend. I'm going to be using if WinRM going forward and um, I wanna make sure that I've covered it. If WinRM will give us terminal access, think of your SSH sessions and how you get into a terminal in, in Linux using SSH. I'm not saying this is SSH, but it's the same idea. You can install it from this repository here. 
you have to know if winning a ram because uh, especially if you have done hack the box i would say 90 percent of my windows machines in hack the box if win a ram let me in so how do we use how do we install if win a ram here's a way you can even use docker which i highly suggest you do when i first did this i didn't know docker and if WinRM will allow us to even uh, run some modules and other things as well, and file transfers, it's like, it's like um, a Metasploit session. Yes, you need, you need, you need the Win, if WinRM 5985 port open. Yeah, I'm just showing people what to do just in case. But let's... Um, Let's try to run it. It's not going to work for me for, because I probably don't have the uh, port. But here's the usage I have if WinRM installed. So I think it's just this. I just need the proper usage here for if WinRM. I didn't think it was that hard to install it. Actually, I installed it like a couple of years ago. It wasn't that bad to install. I'm going to use this. I don't want to execute anything. I just want to sign in. Okay. So my password was Vagrant. My user was Vagrant. Uh, let's see. I should have it installed. Let's hope it runs. There we go. And this will drop you directly into a shell on the remote system. And you can you can transfer files. There's even more modules within WinRM that you can use. In this case, I do not have that port open and I probably won't be able to get a session back. But this is another way to break into that system uh, if you have a username and password. If this doesn't work and remote desktop is not there, chances are you need to now try to sign into any services. Do they have any website with a username and password and use this Active Directory single sign-on uh, for it? Do they have any other tools out there that might you might sign into and try to break into that, that tool? Most likely, that's not the case. Another very important thing that you need to understand is once you get a username and password, you need to go back to the drawing board sometimes and rerun like SMB map, just in case you can see more file shares as the authenticated user. Because sometimes you don't see them because you're not authenticated. And once you authenticate, you can see the files. So you need to rerun your uh, SMB scanning or SMB map or any other tools that you've run before, this time with authentication, make sure that it works. This is not going to establish anything because uh, we did that. Yeah, I already did uh, with XRDP. So for now, that's what I wanted to show you. I, I don't know if we caught anything in our intrusion detection system. Let me see. This is a perfect candidate for host-based intrusion detection systems to be used. I don't know, over the network, maybe the FTP connections are what we'll probably see. There isn't much to see as far as the network is concerned because we didn't run a lot of um, funny tools. But regardless, we want to go back and see. Okay, so no default alerts triggered within security onion right away, but we should be able to see some, some uh, 
traffic at least. Let's go to Kibana. We know we interacted with port 21. We didn't download anything, but we should be able to see the connections of us getting to port 21. Um, we tried to access the RDP, and then we, we do have this, what is this rule here? I think th this is some false positive somewhere. Yeah, this is a different lab environment. But regardless, let's go check down our traffic and see what we have done here. One hour ago. And this is also a lesson for us. If your active directory is being attacked the way we, we are doing here, there isn't going to be as much traffic compared to when a website is being attacked. This is the spike for when we ran Nmap. I can tell because that's the only two we ran today. Let's go to our data in the discover section here. Something was moving across the network, so we should still see stuff, right? But it's not going to be that intuitive and you have to know what you're looking for here. You have to be like a threat hunter. We have this little spike here. We also have this one here. What happened here? That's Nmaps, I think. All right. So first, let's check for interesting traffic from our um, attack here. Oh, I, I got rid of my Nmap, didn't I? And I've noticed that <laughs> it's really hard to exit here for whatever reason. I almost, almost every time I just forget about that one. Destination port of 21. We should also look at other ports as well. That's interesting. Has it been two hours? I don't think so. This is interesting. I don't see anything for 21. Let me dig through some of this traffic and see what exactly we were seeing here. All right. Let's put our source IP for our Kali Linux and make sure that we did see Kali traffic. So this is what it says is our IP address. Was it dead? 31. Maybe this thing wasn't capturing anything. We'll find out. dot 134 let's find out all right someone so, someone was right uh look at zik did see kebros traffic we do have in in our kebros log here we have a bunch of kebros traffic for sure which is very interesting so i've never seen kebros traffic in a network um 
before. So this is actually very interesting for both you and I. Okay. This is very, 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 very fascinating. Here is the service, the KRBTGT service. It actually tells us whether it was a success or failure, which is very interesting. I like this stuff. And the request type is an AS request for the user vagrant on windomain.local. Okay. I lied when I said we can't find anything. We can. So if we wanted to make sure that we um, see only this here, I think we, I can do this. Give me all the cable stuff. Ha. This, yeah, this, this right here is really, really cool. So I'm looking for a request type of AS. So you can actually filter by request types if you wanted to. That is awesome. What was happening with this reset here? Oh, this is a corn event. What happened, what happened with this? You see, this is why I do these li live streams because I learn, I learn a lot as well. This one was a reset, I wonder it's probably one of those when we're trying to uh, request the tickets. Doesn't tell me which user though. This is really awesome. So instead of putting this log path type here, I think the, the easiest one would have been uh, Destination.port. And put the Kebros port there. Then we actually get Kebros specific. So I'm looking forward to learning more about investigating uses, using security onion and any other tools out there. Was this is where I think it goes from being this CTF crap that we do all, all the time to actually learning something. And this right here is very interesting. I, I, I really like that we Zeke has um ability to view Kebro's traffic to the actual request itself. Remember this Darcy user that we did was part of, our, of, of the list. We also have this Dion Nikki user. I can see potential for improvement here where we can actually create even better Suricata rules that we say, hey, if you see one IP address requesting tickets for five users in five seconds at the same exact time, maybe we should flag that traffic was what are the chances that we're authenticating five users? I mean, on, on one random machine in the network at the same time accessing the same resource and from the same IP address within five seconds of each other, unless if it's, a, it's I, I don't know, unless if it's a very, very uh, busy system. All right. Okay, I don't have much, I, I'm now rambling on things that I don't fully know, but I hope you appreciate the fact that we can actually see this Kebros traffic. And in the future, I'll actually spend some time really trying to understand how people enumerate this and if you have any resources on understanding um active director attacks and really uh enumeration on the network traffic please let me know
I'll, I'll also put in the future, I almost did. In our Windows machine, I'm going to put Sysmon uh, and also PowerShell auditing on that and send all those logs to hopefully Splunk. If it's not Splunk, then it will be uh, Elastic Sim. Was I would like to see what the host itself reports, especially with like all the logs that it generates, and also what we see on the wire in the network, like what, like what we are looking at here. Otherwise, if you have any resources, please let me know. I'm very, very uh, interested in learning. But at the same time, I hope you have learned how to at least attack. In this case, this was just an AS rep attack. There is so many of these attacks. And if you're going for any of these tests, if you're going to be a pen tester, or if you're going to go for some exam, being familiar with a lot of them and being uh, really familiar with them is going to just help you be a better pen tester or better at these exams that you're going for, especially the OSCP. I think it, they'll get you with things, silly things like this. All right. If you have any questions, please let me know. Otherwise, um, that's what I had prepared for us. I'll be posting this machine the way it is in the next 20 minutes or so. I just need to export the VM. And it will be in the comments. And I'll be making a variation of this machine. This is just one attack that's on that machine. I'll be making using the same machine, enabling different attacks, so that each week we'll learn something new. And also really emphasize on how we can see um, the traffic and understand what we are looking at here. So if you like this stuff, please make sure to like and subscribe. I think we are almost at 28,000 subscribers if we haven't reached that yet. Um, this is by far the best way to learn and bring your friends next time. Just hang out with me for an hour every Sunday and you and I will learn something new and that way we become better. And in five years time, who knows? We'll know a little bit about everything from here. So. Thanks for being here and thanks for everybody who has been contributing and pointing me in the right direction. Now I need to go figure out why that command earlier didn't work and I'll do that after the stream is done. And next week I'll, I'll try to do that. I need to use John instead of Hashcat. All right. Thanks everyone. See you next time.